All right. So we had a viewer question over the weekend about what the speed difference was between running Nextcloud in a container versus running Nextcloud in a VM. And I thought this was a really interesting question. And this question gets a little bit more complex than just what we're going to display here, but I thought it was a great question to do another episode of speed testing in. So I chose a very easy way of deploying Nextcloud called a snap deployment, or that I call a snap deployment at least. And that snap deployment is extremely quick to deploy. So this video that you're watching here in Fast Forward is a 39 minute transfer of a 20.5 gig file that was going from my Mac laptop, the one that I'm using to film this video right here, over to a container that Nextcloud was installed on using the Snap process. And we know Snap runs not as well inside of a container as it does a VM. And that may a little bit make this test maybe a smad a smidge bit unfair when you look at other instances of Nextcloud or other installation techniques for installing Nextcloud in a container. But we plan to finish out this video showing you a turnkey instance and showing you how much faster Nextcloud in a container can be and necessarily how close those times can be in the VM so that we can thoroughly answer this question. So I do ask you to, if you're seeing this, watch the video all the way through so you can get the full picture of this demonstration. But right now we're at 35 minutes or 39 minutes rather to fully transfer and process a 20.5 gig file transferred from one computer to a Nextcloud container. Okay, so the next file that we're going to look at, or video clip rather, that we're going to look at is a video clip of the same exact file being transferred from the same computer to the same server through the same network equipment, but this instance of Nextcloud was deployed using a VM on Proxmox rather than a Proxmox container or LXC container rather. We still use Snap to install Nextcloud. And the one thing I want to notice, you to notice, other than the fact that this video is much, much shorter and the upload time is, is half of what it was coming from the container is the behavior of the indicator bar that shows the progress of this file upload and how this file upload um, is progressing through its upload time. So this video only took 14 minutes instead of the 39 minutes. So less than half of the time to transfer. And you can notice that it's very consistent in the bar that's moving across the screen as far as like it's not jumping around. So the container jumps from one hour to 45 minutes to an hour to two hours to 45 minutes like to 15 minutes and it does that back and forth. It's It doesn't seem to get like a smooth data flow going through it. And it really would have been nice to have the network data like we have for this video on that. And I, I apologize, I didn't have it set up when I did the recording. And it's something definitely that even I was, I was watching doing the recording, I realized we kind of needed to be able to see what the network packet behavior was. So going forward on some of these speed tests, I'm definitely going to add some of that data in. It's baked into my Mac, so it's kind of easy to look at um, how that's behaving going across my Mac. But we can definitely see that if you installed Proxmox or if you installed Nextcloud using Snap, that a VM is a much better choice than a container as far as performance of Nextcloud itself. 
Now, I don't know if I necessarily agree that this is the best way to do it now because of this data, because as you're going to see here in a second, I'm going to start another video, which is going to show us how the performance of the turnkey container on the same day, the same file, the same transfer is going to compare to that VM. And I kind of know from other testing and other people that have talked about it in comments on our snap deployment video for Nextcloud, um, that the snap deployment inside of a container is much, much slower than the turnkey deployment or even the self deployment, you know, the simple way of deploying Nextcloud. Or not the simple way, the self deployment way, the more complex way where we set up a database, where we set up everything else and we work through it, set up our way. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the last and final test that we're going to do for this video, and that's the turnkey container of Nextcloud. And this container was put in here because necessarily I felt it was as fast as the VM. And we actually found out that it's actually even a little bit faster than the VM it, by about two minutes. So it took about 12 minutes to do the same file transfer coming into this container as it compared to the VM, which was 14 minutes. And necessarily that could possibly be inside the error of margin, but I really feel that a container should be faster than a VM at any given point in this scenario because a VM takes the system resources and it is only given a set set of system resources. Now, we can or we do lock down the amount of system resources that a container can take, but a container will share off of its resources and works off of the system kernel and everything else. So the resources that are given to a container are not for kernel and other activities. They are just for the application itself versus VM. When we give it resources, and especially if you look at kind of the RAM usage before the transfer starts. And I know it's very, very quick in the fast forward, but there the VM's already using three quarters of its RAM and a portion of its CPU resources just keeping itself alive, just for operating system stuff. And a container's not going to do that. A container's resources are for the application itself. Now, we'll notice even in this file transfer that our container doesn't fully utilize its resources, but they're there for it if it needs it. And I'm unsure every single one of these appeared to only use one core for the application. So I'm unsure if Nextcloud really hasn't developed a beyond the point of using a single core. And that might be something that I need to explore more or worth any of you exploring more. And if maybe if you know, drop it in the comments because we might be looking at using Nextcloud wrong. We might want to just use it on the fastest possible core we can, sort of like we we did back in the day with software like Mastercam. And if you guys aren't into machining, I, I apologize. Like Mastercam back in the day, we wanted the fastest com single core performance that we could get because it wasn't utilizing multi-core. They've since changed that, and it's not that way anymore. And... Um, that's that, but that was something that in, especially when I was first starting out machining and some of these multi-core processors were just coming onto the market, that was something that we dealt with inside of Mastercam itself and in the programming world and we had to be very aware of when we were buying computers because, you know, benchmarking computers, if we were wanted to look at single core and a lot of applications back in the day were that way, um, where single core performance was king. Anyways, I'm gonna leave this video off here. I hope you got some valuable, valuable information about um, performance wise of Nextcloud. And I wanna say these speed testing videos aren't just gonna be Nextcloud. I know the first two were. And we probably are gonna do a few more because I use 
Nextcloud, well, not really. I use my Cedrology NAS, but I use Nextcloud for a while. I do want to look at, you know, True NAS. I want to look at Own Cloud. I want to look at a lot of these setups and try to find a way of benchmarking them and comparing them together to ask to answer questions, just like this viewer question. Is it better to run this application in a VM or container? And frankly, I don't know. Some of you might have know some theory behind this and have a better answer between the two of them. But, um, you know, theory in real world isn't always the case. And I learned that especially in R&D, like the theory says one thing and we find out because of other factors that that's not maybe not the exact case because there are other factors that weren't necessarily envisioned or fully understood going into it. So with that, um, thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. We try to release a video three times a week. And speed testing videos are just some of what we do. We do some tutorials and other things computer related. And I'm excited, as you can see some of the boxes in the background, we're going to be heading back to the Freedom House. And we're very excited to bring you some of our other content and other projects there at the Freedom House this year. As um, some of you have asked for some of the car content, I'm going to be rebuilding a 68 Firebird. And I got some cool at least to start off some pretty cool chemistry projects that I'm going to play with uh, regarding the front subframe and trying some rust removal techniques um, and we'll go on from there anyways have a good night